Kung Tagalog ka, hindi kami nakakaintindi ng bisalap. This is probably one of the most common comments I read in my videos online. And I say, I think you know what my response is. pag just mo rin. But all joking aside, or maybe not a joke, I would like to share my story as to why I am adamant using any other language than Bisaya on my social media content. Hi, my name is Chita Sumuntina, known to be the proud Mr. Burr from Davao City. And my girl in social media is not just to be a content creator, but to become an advocate of loving my own beautiful language. Wherever you will look on social media, you will find content in any language. This reflects in our country too. The Philippines has 186 languages spoken throughout the archipelago. It is very much a multilingual country. Out of these 186 languages, nine are foreign and 175 are native. Our country has a rich diversity of culture and language. If we dig deeper, there is more to the city of language than just the number of languages here. The bay of these languages are seen as equal. English is seen as the language of business and law here in our country, whose national language is Filipino. Even here in Mindanao, Speaking Tagalog is seen as something that makes you re powerful. In these situations where one language is better than the other, the more elite language gets used in important interactions and the lesser language is only for conversations or the home. This makes any language that is not the premium language in danger of disappearing. Just like any other content creator, when they started, I started struggling too. I was, I should say, a tragically hard blogger. I started in 2016 with Bisaya parodies and even Bisaya commentary. Or no, I should say cringe with Bisaya commentary videos. You know, at some point I became popular enough that I thought I could already talk about social issues. I can know it all. At first, I didn't really know exactly the purpose of why I keep pushing for Bisaya contents in social media. Maybe in my old, immature, subconscious mind, I wanted to get back at renewed people who think Bisaya people are servants. You know, the Indai and Dodong, which by the way are really pleasant to the ears, are not housemates. But maybe if my Bisaya videos become viral, these people who belittle us would see that, hey, we are intelligent people, and they have mouths too. That was the old me. That was probably my why. And I know that that why is absolutely wrong. It's shallow. Now, in launching my old Bisala Digital talk show two years ago, this was the very first of its kind and paved the way for more shows like this. I talked with fellow content creators, celebrities, and even the average person. This talk show is a talk show that inspires people, not just the stories shared, but with the language I used. The episodes used mainly Bisalap, not Tagalog, not English. And even to this day, I still can fathom how I established a show that is still running and growing on digital platforms. A program that months beside that people can call theirs. A talk show title that became a Bisaya household name. As my visitor talk show becomes most popular, I would then encourage the people to use the gallery in the Filipino so that it reach a bigger market to gain more followers. And as one acquaintance once said, you will never attract big brands with your speaking Bisaya. But still, 
I was firm with my decision. I am not Chito Sumontina, the proud bishop boy for no reason. I mean, the game you never know. It's not. It's a young As I build my offline communities, I realize that there is no point in proving that we, Messiah people, can be successful, too. That no region should be superior to the other. And I mean it. I wasn't just growing artistically, but spiritually. My using the Bisala language in my videos made me realize how beautiful Bisaya is. And the more I lose it, the more I learn, and the more I am having a deeper relationship with the language. For instance, I became more conscious of my structures in using Bisaya, especially in my captions. You know, the O versus O, UG versus OG. All my life, I thought, what's the difference? Aren't they the same? Or isn't it just with the UG? For example, Cynthia or, si Cynthia or Chito, Mikaun or Durian. Two different herbs right there. I never cared about that before. Now, I have become more conscious about my grammar. And with the really, really add to the right. The Bisaya expressions. You know, there's so much fun in Bisaya expressions. If we translate that to English, it will lose its meaning. We can't say gratitude or in Tagalog, I don't even know how to translate that. You're crazy? Are you out of your mind? It was quite be translated. Not just in Gusaya, but any other language too. I mean, sorry, this is one language that can be translated, not just in Bisaya, but in the other language too. The way we talk is not just influenced by our language, but also our culture. Just to go back to what I said earlier, I'd like to play a video. Can we play a video? <laughs> Can we play a video of what I, what I was trying to say about uh, Bisaya expressions? Nakaagi ba kasi elementary nga ka nang nakaigit? Di ba? Di ba naman ang classmate ni mo na the Bisaya expressions are just really fun. You know, when we talk, it's like we have our own rail, right? What I mean is we box. Or we're talking. I think it's just normal for beside the people that we like we like to hurt each other. We even shout at each other. For example, Makabi Bakawa saying the men takinya naka igit. If we have a link with that in a different language, it will never be funny the way it is. And just like what I said I said earlier, we're a full little doodle. And you know it's more fun to laugh like there's no tomorrow. So if you ask me why I am in love with Bisaya language and why I will never speak any other language than Bisaya on my digital show, there are the reasons why. The Bisaya culture is so unique. Some people may find it too strong or too scary. But I do tell you that we are warm and happy people. We are loud, physical, and brash, and that is what makes Bisaya such a beautiful language. I was repeatedly told that I'll never make it because of the language I'm using. He told me that I needed to use Filipino and English with my audience. But my standing on this stage is a proof that Bisaya language has its place on the giant stage of social media. More and more people, even outside of Bisaya speaking areas, are tuning in to our contents. We are not just popping up on social media. We are creating a movement. We to unite, to raise a flag and to help preserve our language for the next generations to come. Allow us to use our language in our contents. 
We honor who we are as digital storytellers because of our language. We are to our best when we speak Bisaya. The next generation of digital neighbors grew up with cell phones, social media, and constant connectivity. We were exposed to everything on the internet, the good and the bad. The same as the ideals of one language being seen as superior will not change if no one makes the step. The community we've made is not just here to entertain, to make you laugh, but to make sure that the next generations can appreciate the beauty and have the same love for the language as I do. Sanya is the language I love and I want you to laugh to. I want you to love your own language and to appreciate and enjoy speaking your own language. I don't need to encourage competition and arguments about one language being better than the other. I just want to inspire and even challenge people to fall in love with their own languages, find the beauty of it, and make sure that the next generation will still be able to speak it. So I hope through this TED Talk, in case you come across my rare con line, you will understand why I will only use Bisaya. Thank you.